In today's video, we are going to continue our topic on straight lines, and we're going to move on to talk about the equation of a straight line, which we touched on at National 5, but we're going to put a few of the facts that we have learned in the last few videos, and so far on our higher side of straight lines, put this into action and talk about the equation of a straight line. Now, at National 5, we said that the equation of a straight line is given by the formula y equals mx plus c. So to work out the equation of a straight line, we need two things. We need the gradient and the point at which it intersects the y-axis. However, we also came up with another formula where we said um, that we can also work out the equation of a straight line if we are given the gradient of the line and a point which lies on the line. And in this case, we say that the straight line through the point, and we're just going to call the point A, B, with gradient M, has the equation And we did talk about this at National 5, but we'll write it down again because we're going to use it quite a lot in today's video. We say that the equation is y subtract b is equal to the gradient m multiplied by x subtract a in brackets. Now notice if we have a point 0, c, c is the y-axis intercept, then we can also use this equation here, which we can use with this equation here. And we can just practice rearranging this equation here to help us um, work out the equation of straight lines. Now for lines that are parallel to particular axes, for example, a horizontal line we mentioned is parallel to the x-axis and a vertical line we said was parallel to the y-axis. Well, for this one here, in our video on gradients, we simply said that the gradient of a horizontal line is equal to zero. And if we substitute this into our equation, y equals mx plus c, our first equation, we get that m, which is zero times x, is going to be zero. So we just get the equation y is equal to c, which we said was the y axis intercept. Now for vertical lines, we know that the gradient is undefined. So we don't actually have a gradient. And we covered this when we talked about gradients. So therefore, we just say its equation is x is equal to k, which is whatever this x value of this line is. Because the x value will always be the same, um, but the y will be changing all the time. Right, let's do a couple examples. So find the equation of the line with gradient 1 third passing through the point 3, negative 4. Now, as we said, we don't have the y-axis intercept in this case. We have a point and the gradient. So we know we're going to be using the formula that says y subtract b is equal to m x subtract a. And our a and our b in this case are going to be these coordinates here. And our m is going to be the gradient in the question that we're given. So let's substitute in our values. We're going to have y uh, minus minus 4 is equal to 1 third x and our a is 3 so subtract 3 now I don't like this fraction on the right hand side so I'm going to start by getting rid of this fraction by multiplying the entire equation through by 3 because a 3 times a third just gives 1 so that will just cancel out so we're going to have 3y and we've got plus 4, but plus 4 times 3 is going to give us plus 12. And then this is just going to be 1 times this bracket, so we'll just leave this as x subtract 3. And now what we'll do is we'll take the x, uh, the, the number here, over to the other side. So we get 3y is equal to x, and we're subtracting 12 from both sides. So we get x subtract 15. 
which we could leave as our equation of the straight line. This is one way that we can call the straight line, but at higher, it's also nice to just take everything over to one side. So this is completely fine to write this as your equation, but we can also say that this here is the same as 3y, take away x from both sides, and then add 15 to both sides, is equal to zero. And this is just another way to write out the equation of a straight line. We would call this the general form of the equation of a straight line. Although this is just as fine as writing as this. So here's another example. We want to find the equation of the line passing through a, three, two, and b, which is minus two, one. Now this time we know we don't have uh, the gradient, but we can work it out because we have two points and we know we don't have the y intercept, but we do know that we have a point which lies in the line. In this case, we have two. So we need the gradient of the line between these two points. And we can simply work that out by saying that the gradient of a B, the line AB, it's going to be y2 take y1 divided by x2 take x1. Substitute in our values, our y2 is going to be 1, y1 is 2, and then minus 2, minus 3. And this is simply going to give us, we get minus 1 over minus 5, and that is the same as 1 over 5. So we've got a negative on both sides. We can just change it to positive to get one over five. So we've got our gradient now. Now we also have one of the points. So let's take the point A. We could use A or B and we'll call this the values A and B. And we can take our formula now. Y take B equals M X take A. And we'd say that Y subtract two. It's also nice when looking for an A and a B coordinate. Pick one that relatively has easy points. So this one has a negative in it. So this one's gonna be slightly easier because it's got two positive values. And we have our gradient, which is one over five, x subtract a, which is three. Now again, we're going to have to do a bit of expanding here. So I'm going to multiply everything through by five to get rid of this fraction. So we're going to have five y minus two times five is minus 10 is equal to five times one over five just cancels out because it will give us just one. So we've got X subtract three. And now we can give this in different forms. As we said, we can either give it in the form five Y equals X add 10 to both sides. We get this, or we could say that five Y subtract X subtract seven equals zero. And remember again that we call this the general equation, like so. Now let's do one more quick example. We are asked to find the equation of the line passing through the points negative three over five, four, and negative three over five, five. Now, similarly to the last question, you might think we might need to start off by working out the gradient. But before we work at the gradient, we can immediately see that the X coordinate in both these points are the same. And what type of lines did we say had the same X coordinate? Vertical right lines. And what did we say about the gradient of vertical lines? We said it was undefined. So what is the equation of this line? Well, we said that the equation is simply X equal to K. And in this case, we have one value for K. It's always going to be the same. So we say that the gradient is simply equal to minus three over five. Uh, not the gradient, the equation, sorry, is equal to minus three over five. And although this doesn't have Y in it, this is the equation of this straight line because you can see the line's going to look like this. The Y value will always be changing. So we don't know what the Y value is, but the X value will always remain at negative three over five. So this is the equation of this line. Now we can also do a little bit of working. This would be enough to get you the marks, but we could also show that there is no gradient of this straight line by trying to calculate it. Let's try and calculate this gradient using our formula. 
So if we give this a go, we're going to have our y2 coordinate to be 5. Our y1 is 4, so we've got 5 subtract 4. And we're going to have minus 3 over 5, minus, minus 3 over 5. And this is going to give us 1 over, well, that's going to be plus 3 over 5. So we're just going to get 0 on the bottom. Now, if you try this in your calculator, you'll find that you simply cannot divide numbers by zero. It will come up saying math error or undefined or error. It simply just does not make sense. We can't divide a number by zero, so there is no gradient. So if we take our, our formula, y equals mx plus c, we don't have a gradient, so we're simply just going to express this line in terms of x, which is what we have done up here. Now we're going to talk about one more quick thing about the equation of a straight line, and we're going to talk about extracting the gradient. So we've got a little example here which asks us to find the gradient of the line with this equation. So in this case, we're not working at the, the equation, we are given the equation and we want to work at the gradient of this line. Now, you might immediately assume because we have our formula y equals mx plus c, you might immediately assume that the number in front of the, in front of the x is our gradient. So you might think that m is equal to 3. But this would be wrong. m is not equal to 3 in this case. But why? Well, if we take our equation, 3x plus 2y plus 4 equals 0, we can see that this is in the general form. If we want to work at the gradient, we must have it in this form. So if we are asked to work at the gradient of a line with this equation, we can work it out by first rearranging our general form to give us this form. So we'll get the y on one side, so we get 2y is equal to, we're going to subtract 3x and subtract 4 from both sides. So we'll get minus 3x minus 4. And then all we need to do to work out the gradient now is we need y to be on its own. We don't want 2y. So we're going to divide everything by 2. So we get y is equal to minus 3x over 2 minus 4 over 2. And we'll just simplify this up a bit by saying that it's equal to minus 3 over 2x because we'd multiply the fraction by this and minus 4 over 2 is simply just minus 2 and now you can see we have the equation in this form and we can extract the gradient from this and say the gradient is m equals minus 3 over 2 and you can see the only way we did this is by getting y to be on its own. In the equation, we had 2y and we had it in the general form. So whenever we do this, we also want to start by changing it into this form and try and get y to be on its own. So we'll do one more example before we round off the video. We're told that the line through the points a3, negative 3 and b, which we don't have the coordinates for, has the equation 5x minus y minus 18 equals 0. We are asked to find the equation of the line through a, which is perpendicular to ab. So if we visualize this, we're going to have some line ab. And we are asked to find the equation of the line which is perpendicular to ab that goes through the point a. So if I can try and do this, we'll see it's going to be perpendicular to this line here. And we talked about this in our other video on the gradient of perpendicular lines. We said they meet at a right angle and we know that the gradient of this line can be worked out if we work out the gradient of the line AB. So the first thing we're immediately going to do is have to work out the gradient of the line AB, which we are told has this equation here. So we've got 5x subtract y subtract 18 equals 0. Now we don't have two points this time so we can't use our gradient formula. We're going to have to extract the gradient like we did before. So let's rearrange to get y on its own. So how will we do this? We'll just plus y to both sides. We'll get 5x 
minus 18 is equal to y, which I'll just put on this side. So therefore the gradient, because we have y on its own, the gradient of the line AB is equal to five, which we just extracted like so. And therefore we know that the gradient of the perpendicular line is going to be, well, we said we just flip the fraction and change the symbol or the sign in front. So we're gonna get minus one over five. If you need to quickly watch up on the video about gradients of perpendicular lines, be sure to check that out, how we work this out. And we'll just quickly say, since m a b times m of the perpendicular line is equal to minus one. Looks a bit like a divide symbol, so I'll quickly fix that up. And therefore, we now have the gradient of the perpendicular line. We have a point on the perpendicular line, as we're told it passes through a. So because we have a point and the gradient, we can use the equation y take b equals m take a. Our b in our case is going to be this value here, and this is going to be our a. So we've got y subtract minus three. I'm just gonna write y plus three. And our gradient we said was minus one over five x, and our a is three. So now we can just expand this. Um, but before we do that, I'm actually going to multiply everything through by 5 to get rid of this fraction. So we'll get 5y plus 15 is equal to... Now this time we do have minus 1 outside. So we need to make sure we don't sub forget our minus 1, which is, which is sitting outside. We don't often write the 1. We'll just put minus x minus 3. And this time we'll just expand this uh, negative below. We'll get 5y plus 15 is equal to, we're going to get minus x, and then minus 1 times minus 3 is just plus 3. And we'll give this in the general form. So we'll take everything over to one side to get that 5y plus x, subtract 3 from both sides, gives us plus 12 is going to be equal to 0. And we say that this here is the equation of the perpendicular line to AB that passes through the point A. So you can see that these questions aren't too difficult. We just need to put together a few facts that we've learned so far, such as gradients of perpendicular lines, being able to extract the gradient, the equation of a straight line, uh, flipping fractions and things like that all to just work out a few equations.